Welcome on board P&O Arcadia. This cruise ship, operated by P&O Cruises, joined their fleet back in 2005. She fits really comfortably into the mid-size cruise ship category, carrying a total of 2,094 passengers. The ship was last refurbished back in 2017, and today in this video, I am going to give you a full ship tour of every single venue on every single deck, starting from the bottom and working our way all the way up to the top. Now, I was on board this ship for a short cruise, and I'm looking forward to showing you around. But if you do enjoy this video today, it would be great if you could jump down below and give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, why not join me on so many more ships by clicking subscribe. Anyway, without further ado, welcome on board and welcome to the atrium. This space spans across decks one, two and three, and you'll see it a few more times as we go through the tour today. A number of different desks are located in here. First up, reception or guest services. You then turn around to the right hand side and you'll find the first of two loyalty and cruise sales desks. So if you are looking to book a future cruise while on board, you would do that in one of these two desks here. And the final area to look at is the Shore Excursion Centre, which is directly opposite guest services. Now, one thing that you will always find available in the atrium, and this gets refreshed every single day, are your daily puzzles. Now, that will usually consist of a crossword, and also, on the back, you'll also find some sort of Sudoku puzzle as well. So there's plenty to keep you busy every single morning if you pop down to the atrium. Now, moving on to our next venue, and we're going all the way to the very, very front of the ship, and this is the Palladium Theatre. Now, bear in mind that Arcadia is, to be perfectly honest, a pretty old cruise ship, and she's also pretty small in comparison to a lot of other ships that P&O Cruises now operate. I was blown away by this theatre. I found this to be much bigger than I was expecting for a cruise ship of this size, and I found it to be much more comfortable than I was expecting for a cruise ship of this age. Now, this does span across decks one, two, and three, so we're currently on deck one. We entered up at the deck two entrance, and then you've got deck three upstairs, which we'll go up to in a second. One thing that is worth noting is that there is a wide range of seating available in this theatre. You've got sofas, you've also got bucket seats, and then you've got the more traditional theatre style seating as you go further back on the lower levels and also up here. There's also some really nice, it feels much more private sections, for example, down here on the right hand side that overlook the stage. I'm not convinced they have the best view, but if you're looking for a more private experience, head down early and grab one of them. The next venue up on deck number two then is the Monte Carlo Casino. In comparison to what I've seen on a lot of other P&O cruise ships, this casino was a really good size. It's got tables, it's got slot machines, and everything that you would expect in a modern cruise ship casino. I would imagine that it's more generously accounted for from a casino point of view due to the fact that it's adult only and there's no children at all on this sailing. But if you like tables, if you like slot machines, you are going to be right at home in the Monte Carlo. And right next door is where you're going to find the Rising Sun. This is the onboard British pub venue, and I always think that this venue and all of the other British pubs that I've seen on Carnival Line ships, they do deliver the British pub concept really, really reliably well. If you want to come into a venue on your cruise where you can probably watch a bit of sport, you can get some good beer, you can get some live entertainment and also some fun and games, then this is exactly where you'll want to come. It is worth noting from a sport point of view, you will notice that there are large flat screen TVs dotted around this venue. They will usually live stream sports. So if you are cruising while, for example, the football is on, hopefully there's no need to worry. Coming out of the pub and heading further back in the ship, the next venue that we need to talk about is the art gallery. This venue is a little bit of a funny one on Arcadia. You can see here that it operates in the middle of a main corridor. So you will find that during your cruise, you'll be walking through the gallery 
fairly often because you have to go through here to go, for example, from the restaurant, which we'll get to shortly, to the theatre at the front or to the pub. So, yeah, why not stop, take in a bit of art, and who knows, you might find something that you want to take home. Directly beside the art gallery is where you'll find the Globe. This venue operates at night as the onboard nightclub, and in the early evening or during the day on sea days, this can operate as a much smaller, much more intimate theatre. I really, really like this venue. I found it to be a great size. I thought the bar service in here was really good. So yeah, if you do enjoy the nightclub on a ship, you're going to head right in here. And just outside, this is Intermezzo. Now this is one of the onboard bars, and you'll find this on the second floor of the main atrium that we were in earlier. Now in here you should probably expect pretty chilled vibes. They very rarely, if at all, would have music in here due to the fact that it's in that main atrium and that would then interfere with the piano bar upstairs which I'll show you shortly. And directly across the hall from Intermezzo is where you'll find Ocean Grill. Now this is the onboard seafood restaurant. Unfortunately during my sailing it was closed so I managed to get in just to take some photographs and some videos of the venue itself, but I can't tell you about the food in here. So if you have cruised on P&O Arcadia and you have dined in this venue, let us know down in the comments. Would you recommend it or would you propose dining elsewhere? Now let's get back out and look at the Spinnaker Bar. This is the next bar that you'll find directly next door to Intermezzo, heading towards the back of the ship. In here, you can expect to find some pretty impressive ship models in these large glass boxes over on the left hand side and also a grand piano. So if you, like me, enjoy having a beer or having a cocktail and listening to the piano, then you can do that in Spinnaker Bar. And that brings us to our final venue on deck number two. This is the Meridian Restaurant, which is the main dining room on board Arcadia. Always remember, before you go in, you can see the menu right outside. That's usually updated first thing in the morning to show you the breakfast service, then it'll be updated to show you dinner. Let's take a look inside because I think this dining room is pretty impressive from a space point of view. You can see here, it is enormous. Now, it's a really, really good size. It's got lots of covers, but due to the fact that it's split across two floors, it doesn't feel overwhelming at any point and it also gives it a little bit of what I would define as understated elegance. I do think this is one of my favourite dining rooms on any P&O ship. If you'd like to see more of the food on board or the overall experience on board then you can head over to my channel, search for P&O Arcadia and I've got a full vlog series that you can watch to show you a little bit more of what you can expect from life on board. I found the decoration in here to be really, really nice. I didn't come across any form of split. Quite often you would use one level if you were on any time dining and another level if you were on a booked dining slot. But during my cruise, I dined in both the downstairs and the upstairs venues. So yeah, that may have changed, but that was the case while I was on board. So as you saw a second ago, we have climbed the stairs and we are now up on deck number three. This is probably my favourite deck on board P&O Arcadia and also on board any cruise ship that operates with this feature. Welcome to the promenade deck and this is a full real wood promenade deck that wraps all the way around the outside of the ship. You can see here that we were docked at the point of me taking this video. We were docked in the city of Rotterdam and the majority of guests had already gone ashore but look at how peaceful it is and look at how fantastic the views are that you get all the way around the ship. A lot of modern cruise ships now have got rid of these wraparound promenade decks, but it's so refreshing to see, granted a slightly older ship, but it's so refreshing to see a ship within the P&O Cruises fleet clinging on to this feature. You can see that the lifeboats are directly above you here. So when you board the ship and you come to do your muster drill on day number one, you'll probably find that your muster station will be either on the other side of all these big wooden doors or your muster station may even be 
out on this promenade deck, but hopefully you've enjoyed a quick lap round and you'll agree that deck is a real asset to the ship. Moving back inside, this is a photo gallery. If you use the onboard photographers to take your photo, then you can come and view and purchase it in here. And if you require the services of the onboard florist, then you can do that here as well. You can, if you like fresh flowers in your cabin, order them before you board. You just have to do it well in advance on the P&O Cruises website once you log in to manage your booking. This corridor here, all of these wooden sections on the right hand side will expand and they will present printed photos to you that have been taken during the cruise. Now further along, welcome to the top floor of the atrium that we've referenced a few times now and this is where you're going to find the piano bar. This to me is one of the most relaxing venues on board Arcadia and if you quite enjoy as we said earlier grabbing a cocktail and listening to the piano it's really nice that you've got multiple venues to do that on this ship. Piano Arcadia to me is quite a relaxed cruise ship. It also feels relatively informal, which I like. Yes, they do apply relatively strict dress codes on certain evenings of the cruise, but on a regular night, I do find that the decor in here really helps to give a really informal, classic vibe through the ship. Now also on deck three is where you're going to find various shopping outlets. You can see here, it's very much like a modern mall. And if I give you a quick look round some of the onboard offering here, you will begin to understand that the range available in the onboard shops on Arcadia is really quite wide. For a cruise ship of this age and for a cruise ship of this size, I found the shopping to be pretty good on here. Personally, I'm not a huge cruise ship buyer. I don't tend to come on and shop loads when I go on holiday because I buy my things to go on holiday before I go. But if I was in a position where I wanted to take home gifts for people, I think I'd probably be able to do that pretty easily on a ship like Arcadia. Whether it's perfumes, whether it's makeup, whether it's candles and reed diffusers, or as you can see here, ship branded memorabilia or cruise line branded memorabilia you've got pretty much everything that you could imagine available to you in these gift shops one bit of advice i would give you if you are an onboard shopper is to keep an eye out for any onboard sale events you can see in my photos a second ago that on one day of my cruise there was 25 percent off everything that was p and o branded so i luckily held off to make my purchases on that day but they didn't advertise that before however i'm sure if you asked a member of the crew they would tell you if there was one of these events coming up you can also buy duty-free alcohol on board which was always useful for taking a bottle or two back home with you directly beside the shopping arcade on deck number three is the onboard library this again is a feature which on more modern cruise ships seems to be missing on many deck plans but it was lovely to have this still available on Arcadia. Whether you wanted to come in here and borrow a book free of charge for the duration of your cruise or whether you wanted to come on and surf the internet on one of the computers then this was available I think it was from about eight o'clock in the morning until about nine o'clock at night so pretty good opening hours in here you'll also find a jigsaw collection that you can do the jigsaw in the library and what better way to relax on a sea day than to come in here, pick a jigsaw and either join someone else and keep working on one or start your own from scratch and try and get it finished before the end of the cruise. Now the next venue is Cafe Vivo and this is one of the onboard coffee shops. It's probably the main onboard coffee shop and you'll find this towards the midship section of deck three. Now in here you will find Costa Coffee, you will find an array of cakes and snacks during the day. I didn't use this venue too much because it didn't have any natural daylight so it felt as though it was in quite a dark part of the ship. Now the reason why this venue doesn't have any natural daylight is because on the side of the ship with the windows you'll find these two conference rooms. First up you've got the ocean room and then you've got here the bay room. Unfortunately, this room wasn't set up for a conference, so please excuse the mess in here. I did want to show this so that you could get a feel for 
the scale of the room, the overall decor of the room, and the feel of the room. Again, please ignore the tables and chairs all over the place in here. The next venue, which is coming off the other side of Capri Vivo, is the screening room. I was delighted to find this on board. I hadn't done a great amount of research before getting on the ship, so I didn't realise that there was going to be an on-board cinema. In here, you could come in on a sea day, I believe it was also available on a port day, to watch either some classic movies or, depending on what time, some more modern hits as well. I found this to be a really comfortable spot and as a solo traveller, I really enjoyed coming in here at night before dinner and watching a movie. Now that's us finished on deck number three. The next deck is deck four and between four and eight is all passenger cabins. If you are interested in seeing more from passenger cabins, head over to my channel and you will find a number of ship tours there. The only venue that does pop up across decks four to eight is the onboard laundrette facility. I am a huge advocate of onboard laundrettes. I think they are absolutely excellent and they are so well utilised. People seem to love coming in to do their laundry when they go on a cruise. Presumably because Arcadia is a ship that tends to operate the World Cruise for P&O, then yeah, you would require laundrette facilities. I don't believe laundrettes are available on every P&O ship. In here, you'll find an ironing board with an iron so you can get your formal wear ready after you've travelled to the ship. And you'll also find washers and dryers. There was detergent in this room, but it looks as though it was potentially left by a guest. So I can't comment if P&O do include complimentary detergent. Anyway, let's get back to passenger venues and welcome to deck number nine. This is the onboard gym and again, I feel like I'm saying this a lot in this tour, but for the age of ship and for the size of ship, look at the size of this gym. The facilities in here were excellent and I can tell you now, I have been on cruise ships double the size of Arcadia and the fitness centre is a lot smaller. So this is really, really well accommodated. Next up, you've got the salon. If you would like to come and get your hair done, if you'd like to come and get your nails done, or if you'd like to come and get your feet done, then you will absolutely be able to get that done here. This is part of the onboard spa, that over the next minute or so, I will show you a couple more different parts to this. But you can see here, it's pretty well maintained. I did think this was a pretty nice spa area, although I didn't get any treatments myself. The next venue that you'll see are the treatment rooms. Now, generally speaking, these all will have floor to ceiling windows overlooking the ocean. Unfortunately, we were docked at the point of this video, so you're looking at relatively industrial units. And then some are located on the inside of the ship, so you'll be able to make that room really, really dark for your treatments, which would be lovely. Now, coming out of the spa, let's talk about the observation deck. This is a deck space that so many people who I met on board had no idea this was here. This is right in front of the gym, all the way at the front of deck number nine. And look at this view. Every single time I would come out here, there would be nobody else or very few people. And it was so nice on a relatively busy cruise ship to feel as though you had the deck to yourself. This is also where you'll find a lot of the traditional Arcadia benches. I would really recommend head along to the buffet, which I'll show you shortly, grab a tea or a coffee, and come and take in the views at the front of the ship. It is beautiful. Now moving slightly further back on the ship, you're going to find the Neptune pool. This is the indoor slash outdoor pool on board. What I mean by that is that the roof in here fully retracts. So if you are cruising in a climate where you would be able to sunbathe and you'd be able to lie outside, then you can expect to come up here and see the roof open. Unfortunately, I was on a cruise in November out of the UK, so there was no way we would be able to sunbathe outside, hence why the roof is fully closed. In here, you've got a couple of different facilities. You've got water machines, You've also got a grill and you've also got this buffet serving station which was available during lunchtime. 
And then there's one other relatively hidden feature that I'd like to show you from this pool. From all of the cruise ships I've been on, people always assume that the spa and the steam room and whatnot are pay extra. Now you can see here, this looks as though we're entering the spa. However, welcome to the onboard sauna. This is totally included in your cruise fare. You've got a ladies sauna on the left and a men's on the right. And when you go in here, you've got exactly what it says on the tin. It's just a sauna, it's not luxurious, but this is so good to have it included in your cruise fare. If you are looking for a venue where you want to relax at night and for it to be lovely and quiet, I would really recommend the Neptune pool. The way they light it is just so beautiful. So grab a glass of wine, come up here, and why not watch the stars through the retractable roof? Now we're almost right at the very back of deck number nine. This is the Belvedere, which is what p and Arcadia calls the onboard buffet. Let me give you a quick look around. You've got a hand washing station as you come in. There was only one of them. I found that really unusual for a cruise ship carrying multiple thousands of passengers to only have one sink. So it would be really interesting to see if they may look to add more in the future. What you're looking at here is a pretty traditional cruise ship buffet. There's nothing here that's totally breaking the mold that I need to highlight to you. If you've been on a cruise before, you will be pretty comfortable in here. You've got all the serving stations running down both sides of the ship, and then you've got the seating running along both sides by all of the glass windows, which again are floor to ceiling. In here you'll also find water machines, you'll also find juice machines, and you'll also find tea or coffee available all day. So you can see here exactly what those beverage stations look like. You'll find multiple of them throughout the buffet. So this one was closed during the point of filming, but if you went to the other side, then you'd be able to stock up there. And right at the back of the ship is where you'll find the Aquarius pool. Down below, you've also got the Aquarius bar, and you can see that this venue is used for a lot of sail away parties because the views are absolutely beautiful. And that means we're now moving up a deck. So welcome to deck number 10. So we are almost done on our tour of Arcadia today. And this venue is the Crow's Nest. Now, if you have cruised with P&O before, or maybe you've cruised on a Cunard ship, which is part of the same family, then you will be familiar with what the Crow's Nest is. If you're new here, then the Crow's Nest is an onboard bar, usually located at the very front of the ship. And in here, you'll find cocktails, you'll find beers, you'll find loads of different drinks with some of the most breathtaking views out across the ocean or out across whichever port you're located in. The reason for those views is that if you look on the right hand side of this shot, you have got floor to ceiling glass all the way around the front of the ship. So you get a view out of almost every single direction and the whole crow's nest is designed around this beautiful round shaped bar. So why not throw yourself down on one of these chairs perch and try out your new favourite cocktail. Directly beside the crow's nest is where you'll find another of the onboard conference rooms. This on the deck plans is noted as the onboard wedding venue. So if you are planning to get married on P&O Arcadia, then first of all, lucky you, please let us know in the comments and all the best for your special day. But this is probably where you can expect your ceremony to take place. The next venue on deck 10, is the Retreat. Now the Retreat on a P&O cruise is an additional venue that is usually for the exclusive use of suite guests or you can sometimes pay for day access. Now I'm not sure how this would work on Arcadia because I've never come across a Retreat that's indoors. The Retreat that I'm used to is an external sun deck. On this cruise I didn't meet anyone who was in the Retreat and it was certainly empty every time I would walk past so unfortunately I can't advise you on that. And the other thing to reference on deck 10 are the deck games. I love shuffleboard on a cruise <laughs> and you will find all the rules for the relevant deck game on the wall of the ship and then you'll find the actual board and all your equipment down on the deck there. Moving up, welcome to deck 11 and this is the onboard sports court. In here you've got a couple of different sports actually all within the netted area. First up on the left hand side here, you've got your golf nets. So if you do want to come in here 
and perfect your drive or perfect your chip while you're on chip, then you absolutely can do that in there. And on this side, you've got your basketball court. The beauty of this is that because it's fully netted, as with the majority of other cruise ships out there, it means that you can play basketball, you can play football and so on and so forth without the worry of the ball landing in the ocean because if your ship is moving, you ain't getting that back. Now, moving back inside, there's only a few venues up on deck 11. The first is Sindhu, which is the onboard Indian restaurant. If you've watched my recent ship tour from onboard p and Britannia, you will know that I am a huge advocate of this restaurant. Unfortunately, during my sailing, it was relatively post-COVID and this restaurant was also closed. I believe all of the restaurants are now fully operational again on board Arcadia, but based on my experience on other P&O cruise ships, you absolutely need to come in here and give it a try. Every single time I've dined at Sindhu, I've found the quality to be really, really high and I've found the overall ambience in the room to just be absolutely great. It's like dining in a lovely Indian restaurant back on land and the price is usually pretty good. Now directly beside Sindhu, you're going to find East Bar. This is one of the bars right at the very top of the ship, which again promises some pretty spectacular views. Let me show you inside. You can see that you're looking out over the very top of the retractable roof from that indoor outdoor pool that we were in downstairs. And this venue is definitely one of the more informal venues. And in fact, I never saw it open at night in here, but during the day, it served almost as a little coffee lounge. It was really nice and really, really chilled out up here. Next up, let's look at this external sun deck. This is a deck that I found not too many people knew about. Anytime I came up here, I'd pretty much be on my own. You can see here, this was during sail away from Rotterdam and there were very few people. Now, before I finish my tour today, I wanted to give you this tip. p and Arcadia has got glass elevators. I'm not going to tell you exactly where they are. You're going to have to find them, but look at these views. Granted, you're looking at the industrial port, but imagine if you were looking out over the open ocean, it would be beautiful. Anyway, that's it. That is a full ship tour of p and Arcadia. Thank you so much for being here today. If you've enjoyed it, it would be amazing if you would subscribe to the channel and that just helps me grow and pushes my content to more people. If you're planning to cruise on this ship, have the best time and let me know in the comments how you got on. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.